just everything. Like, <clears throat> so you're staying somewhat busy. You got finished, you got rid of that, uh, you, you finished that big crazy project that was starting to have you stressing and wanting to pull your hair out. But uh, they ended up being super happy. They were. Yeah. We, uh, we did a complete repaint from cabinets, walls, ceilings, trim, all of it um, on that one. But we're, uh, I'm shutting down the, the cabinet side as far as building and focusing primarily on just the, the paint side because. Just the refinishing part of it? I know I can make more money. <clears throat> yeah. I can yeah. make more money and do less work. And I just want to make sure that that one's up and running completely before I tackle another business. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying is like, uh, Hey, Walt, Walt, glad to have you here, brother. Glad to have you. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying is, is uh, re remember shit. Even when we talked, good Lord, man, it was, uh, okay. shit, I don't know. What was it like? The very first time we talked was, over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, but we were talking. Yeah, you know, we, we were talking. About about right. We were, we were, even then, because I always tell all I tell all contractors, man, is just um, really look at you know two or three things that bring in the most amount of profit for the least amount of freaking energy and the least amount of headaches. It yeah. may not. It, it may not be these fancy, crazy ass projects that we want to do, but man, that, that's just making us. At the end of the day, that's just making us feel good. That ain't putting extra money in the bank and, and, and letting us spend more time, you know, with the kids or fishing or whatever the hell we want to do. And those big fancy jobs, they're they're too hard to uh, duplicate as in train new guys to be able to do it. So you end up either having to hire someone who has, you know, 10, 15 years of really quality uh, uh, craftsmanship or is, uh you know, just like like stick stick to the to, to the to the easy easy money to where it's easy to train guys and what's 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 best about the painting and refinishing of the the, the 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 kitchen cabinets being able to go in there tape it off know how to do the primer know how to do the sanding know how to get your your next coat of paint to stick all of that crap what's 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 easy not easy but easier about it than building it um it's less time consuming i'm able to train guys a lot faster yeah um to actually because there there's two main parts of cabinets it's <clears throat> you got mechanical and chemical adhesion if you know how to do that you know how to prep and a little bit of practice on finishing you can do it you can knock it out yeah and but teaching guys how to lay out a kitchen mm. how to know basically <laughs> how to build it where to start it. yeah building yeah i mean, I mean that and, and, with, and with building the kitchens nowadays, I mean, uh, shit, it seems like all these things are what they call flat box almost, right? If you're not doing it, if, you're not doing, much. if you're not doing custom and those flat box cabinets, I mean, they seem to be pretty decent. Some of them are. I mean, there's so many different variations, man. That, I mean, a lot of these big box stores whenever you buy from there or you buy from a, a retailer that yeah that sells custom cabinets per se yeah i mean some of them are good quality but you're still not getting your craftsmanship and you're still not getting somebody that that builds it from just straight lumber yeah you know it's all cut out of a cnc machine if you have that that's cool yeah you know you're able to save a lot of time and a lot of money but I mean, when you have cabinets that are built straight from lumber, everything's milled out, you know, they last a whole lot longer. Yeah. Yeah. But what's the price difference? But, um, it depends. It's all in your detail. I mean, if you do a, a shaker style cabinet, I mean, normally they're between 250 and 300 linear foot. Yeah. You know, but that's custom built. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Lowe's or somewhere like that, you know, have mortar, it's probably going to be the same, but they're not going to last a whole lot longer. Yeah. And that's the whole thing too, is like, 
either either on the website and, and in the videos or even on the phone talking to clients it's it, it's being able to spend enough time with them to educate them on the difference of all that stuff because you know they're, they're all on the freaking internet and yes i talked about this all the time it's like the freaking you know doctors and other people are dealing with it but you know the wife or the you know the they get online and they read all this stuff whether it's through freaking you know the the house.com or all the freaking blogs and these uh stay-at-home moms that do the blogs now and they do the blogs because they're making a nice chunk of change you know getting the uh the the revenue from the ads that people place on their freaking blogs because you know you know uh, housewives and homeowners are going there reading their blog the difference between you know custom cabinets versus going to lowe's and stuff but if they say something that we don't say you know they're going to believe the freaking uh, stay at home mom who wrote the blog before they believe the guy who's been doing it for freaking 30 years. It blows my mind. Unless, and, 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 unless you have the time to freaking educate them and, and walk them through it. But then you're fighting an uphill battle. They, they're almost second guessing you all the way through the project. Well, you know, as well as I do, it's all about exposure. Yeah. I mean, if you have 10,000 people on a blog, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know they're going to believe them versus, you know, somebody that that does it on a daily basis and they don't have that reputation yet. Yeah, hey, know, and, on and, the and, internet. And here, man, these guys over here, they've got three or four locations. They're uh, I don't know. They, I don't think they're nationwide. I think it's a, a local company, but shit, maybe I'm wrong. I should look them up. But it's uh, the, you know, the, yeah, I can't think of the name of them. But they re, they reface cabinets. And that, and that's, that's pretty much all they do is, you know, they, they come in, take the drawers back to their shop or whatever, reface it, you know, do the ref, uh, I, gotta, I gotta look up the name, but man, they run big ass freaking commercials nonstop on the radio. They got big ass billboards everywhere. And then they're doing uh, in-house uh, seminars to where you got to fill out the online. And then you come over there to their sh showroom slash, you know, uh, you know, where they do all the friggin' work and they have like a friggin' breakfast for, you know, 50 or hundred homeowners and walk them around their freaking, uh, like the, you know, in the, in the back where they're milling up all this stuff, how they're refacing stuff. And they're just really, and the whole thing is like a, a, a two hour plus breakfast, you know, adding on another hour, but they're, these guys are filling up this seminar where homeowners are going over there, you know, learning about refacing their cabinets instead of trying to redo the whole kitchen and stuff. Uh, newborn, newborn cabinets is what it's called. Uh, and, and I guess, I don't know, maybe it, there must be a profit margin in, in, in doing that. And, and I know they're not cheap, but uh, it's like, like you said, the refinishing, it seems to be a, a little bit more, not easy money, but uh, easier money. It, it is easier, but if it's not done properly, it'll come back and bite you. Yeah. It really will because it's just like refinishing any kind of wood. Yeah. If it's not done right, you have tons of rework to come back and do. Yeah. So yeah. Hey Walt hey Walter, I know you got it on mute, but uh what's what's your not easy money, but what's if you if if you had your choice of one or two things to uh to specifically do over and over and over again, what brings in your biggest profit? Um just belting uh pole barns. And I mean, just a standard pole barn. We come in, we put the shell up, you know, finished outside and, and move on. That's where we probably make the most money. And then, uh, so that's just the outside frame. Are you doing the foundation also, or do they have to have the foundation ready before you get there? Well, on a pole barn, you know, you're both set in the ground. And so you don't actually pour a foundation. Oh, is that right? They sit on they sit on concrete pads. Yeah. So so, it's, uh, just, so who who does the concrete pad? You or or they have to hire someone to come out there and do it. But no, we uh, we drill a hole on a pole barn. You drill holes where you post that into. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we put a they they actually make the concrete pads. So they deliver them to the job site. And they're about four inches thick and fourteen inches in diameter. And you drill the holes, you clean out the loose dirt, and you drop the concrete pad to the bottom of it, and then you set your post on it. Damn. Hey, so even that concrete, what I used to think was the foundation, they're just bringing, they're even bringing in the, uh, 
the concrete already just you're just already. dropping it in yep it's already made and um i mean there comes yeah they make them they make them and ship them wow you don't have to, you don't pour concrete uh in the hole you don't yeah. have to pour the concrete on the job site wow so when you the leave um the holes we drill are about 18 inches in diameter we use 18 inch auger yeah and then the concrete pads we drop in um some are four some are six it just depends what the code is in that county okay uh, thick and then they're all uh, 14 inches in diameter yeah and then uh so 14 yeah. inches in diameter so that's only like what a little foot by whatever foot and a half not even that foot and two inches foot and two inches yeah yeah shit oh look, look, look there's the baby what's up little baby hey oh man i want to grab them cheeks jb you remember those days <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> yeah. Hey, so how many of the pole barns can you do a, a month? Or do you do like one uh, a week or what? Well, yeah, it just depends. One to two weeks is, for the most part, they, they run one to two weeks, yeah. Smaller one is uh, a week. Bigger one, about two weeks. They don't, it's not very often it goes over two weeks. Yeah. It's just a pole barn. And, 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 and are you staying busy right now? You seem to be. I mean, we're, we're, I need another crew. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, so, we're, so, yeah we're, we're booked uh, uh, into July already. Damn, that's really good. Well, I hope anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's what I really want to kind of touch on too, though, is, is, because uh, I'm, I'm talking to another contractor about it right now, who, who's the same thing is, is, is kind of booked up and it's, uh, I don't know. It's like you you know your area and you know your competition and you know all this other stuff, but it's it's uh man, we we gotta always be mindful or uh you know, should we be charging more? Should we be charging more? Uh yeah. And I don't mean like trying to rake clients or homeowners over the coals type of thing, but uh it, it everything really is supply and demand, whatever if the gas prices are gonna go up right now because of the freaking you know, the pipeline not being working or who, it doesn't matter. I mean, housing, the, uh, housing in Texas is going up skyrocketing because everybody's leaving freaking California going to, to freaking Texas. Uh, you know, so there's less, there's less, you know, houses for sale. So people, you know, so that raises the prices. So it's, it's the same thing with us in, in construction is, um, is, you know, when you, you have the websites, you got the videos, you got the, you know, the YouTube, your Facebook, all of that stuff. So everybody kind of sees you hopefully, but uh, when you're busy, you know, mindset wise is like, man, is, is you want to stay busy and book yourself out. But at the same time is instead of having uh, five jobs, you, you, you may be better off with three jobs. If you just increase your, 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 your profit margin, you know, you know, five more, you know, 5%, raise your prices, another, whatever it is, if you guys are doing by foot square, whatever. Uh, it, 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 and I mean, you're going to have to start raising them, all of us in construction. And, and, and for me, and I don't know about you, JB, but because we've been doing it for so long, it was, it was always hard for me to raise the prices because man, when I got into freaking uh, construction and, and we were doing stuff for like 99 cent a foot and now it's like almost $6 a foot. And it's like, it's like just kind of still boggles my mind. It's like shit to where I'm thinking, man, is it, are they going to pay that? Or do they, do they know what it used to be? <laughs> and, and it should probably be, should probably be, be like $8 a foot. I mean, cause these guys like a, uh, well, JB, you know, like when I went over to that Bucky's and stuff, if if McDonald's and Walmart and all these easy jobs, which doesn't lead to anything for these these younger people, uh, but if they're starting off at you know ten dollars an hour, twelve dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, you know we're going to have to match that to get them to come work for us, and uh, it's freaking hard to pay some dude that has never been in construction it's hard to pay him minimum wage because it seems like you're freaking losing money for the first two weeks, three weeks, just because everything freaking slows down because you have to stop to show them everything. And that's what these guys don't understand, you know, but that's the part about doing the business. That's why I say, I like to have on, I like to have the, uh, 
three month and six month sign on bonus, you know, like whether it's 250 for the first three months or 500, whatever you can afford, but you got to get these guys to freaking stay, uh, 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 hang around because it's like, shit, you're, you're showing them what tools or what, uh, you know, sweep up, load up, unload. Uh, they can kind of unload pretty easy, but you know, shit, if you guys are like me, you got at the end of the day, they're cleaning up. You've, you've got where you want everything to go. So they got to kind of learn that. And hopefully it's not you teaching them. Hopefully it's you got your lead guy teaching them and you've already taught your lead guy everything. But, we, you know, all of that, not to talk about hiring and, and, and firing real quick, but we've the next couple of jobs you're bidding or whatever, you, you've, you've got to start really looking at that price and, and uh, whether it scares you or not, man, you got to increase that number. And I love the whole uh I know JB and, and I think so too, Walter, but is I like you to have that freaking price list, you know, written out. So you're looking at it because, uh, and I had to do that for myself because I'm telling you, I'd, I'd get to some of these jobs, I'd measure it all up and I'd start doing the number and I'd, I'd, uh, you'd see a big crazy number to where it, it, in my lifestyle it, it's like, man, if someone come to my house and told me it's going to cost me that much, not a freaking chance. So, it, it, so mentally with me, I'm thinking it's too high. But the, it's, you know, these guys are making, you know, triple, you know, five times, 10 times more than what I'm making. Uh, so they've got the money or the value that we're bringing to the table, what we're going to do to increase their property value. That's how we really got to look at it. But yeah. when you have that price list in front of you and uh, just go into the, you know, go into your Microsoft Docs, whatever the hell you got. And just you know increase it whatever it is if you're doing by foot and you're adding on another 50 cent or a dollar a foot whatever it is you know and just print it out so you're looking at it because when it's printed out and and you're looking at it even for you subconsciously it starts looking more real and more authentic and more believable for you and and uh and should i even have it there on the table where they can see it and i'm doing my own numbers and looking over at it so they they kind of already know but all of that it's and I already, and I'm, I'm going to do a whole two or three series on, uh, you know, you know, selling jobs, but I like to already have my number 10% higher than what I really want it to be anyway. So if it's, if it needs to be a thousand dollars, I want to have it at 11 to 1150. Uh, and it, so I can slide over. So they send them email, text message, whatever it is, talking to them, they see that, you know, 1100, 11,000, whatever it is. And then talking to them. And then I'm like, man is, you know, depend on which way they want to go. Uh, let's, if, if, if you can go ahead and we get the deposit a day so I can lock in the price of the material, I'll knock off a hundred, you know, I'll knock off a hundred dollars. I'll knock off a thousand dollars, whatever that 10% was, you know, up there. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah. yeah. And do, uh, do um, either, do either one of you guys do that already? And I'm telling you, we're going to have to, we've got a rate of it. it you're either going to, you're going to either have to take profit out of your own pocket to start hiring and, and, and training some of these guys or the homeowner is going to have to pay for it and as everything else goes up i'm telling you though shit jb what over there where you're at in gulf shores how much has the home values went up in the last five years <laughs> i know it ain't went um, down <laughs> no it <laughs> it's close to it's close to 70 percent on a lot of the homes yeah i mean they yeah it, it's ridiculous it really is hey walter where are you at are you in where are you at walter in virginia indiana indiana so and, and what about so what how about the homes are the uh over there i mean uh you guys are still uh, getting the same thing i know there's i know there's Cali pe people leaving oregon and california heading out towards kansas and indiana um the market the housing market has really gone up over the past few years yeah and it's still it's still really good. Yeah, and it's still going up. So I'm telling you, it's like, and that's what I tell myself every time that I'm, or we're doing a project is I'm looking, I'm thinking, man, they're spending 15 grand, 30 grand, you know, doing something in the house. But that, that freaking 30 grand almost double, I mean, it, it almost doubles immediately. I mean, it, it definitely, if, you, if, they, if they're spending 30 grand giving it to us, that's adding on another 40 grand to 60 grand of, of, of immediate value to their, to their property. Not that they're going to sell it, but in today's market, it just, it, it definitely goes up and, uh, and they're sticking around for another five years, whatever it is. It's just, we're as a trade in whole 
construction guys, I mean, we really undervalue, you know, uh, charge wise, what we're doing for the value of the homeowner. I hope I'm saying that right. Because, because mentally, you really got to be, we got to be thinking this when we're talking to them and, and we're looking at everything. And especially these pole barns or any of these barns and some of the pictures and the things that I've seen that you do, uh, you do, Walter. I mean, that's freaking, those are crazy. That's a freaking, yeah. that's a, that's a full, because now that I've been, I've been looking at some ranches in Texas and, and a couple of them are, are what they call uh, barn dominiums or they're kind of like yeah. barns that turn into houses or, or. Like, yeah, that's what that is. is it, yeah. And, but man, on the inside, what these guys do to it, I mean, they're freaking beautiful. Yeah, they're um, and uh, and our as far as our prices, which you know we just started in 2018. Yeah. Um, but from 2018 to now, our our labor price has gone up 60 percent. Wow. So, um, so we're higher than most, you know, most local companies, but we're still still less than like the bigger companies like morton buildings fbi yeah. um we're still we still beat them by almost five dollars a square foot on a bull barn yeah and that's a lot <laughs> yeah yeah big time but and then, uh, most most local companies on average you can build a bull barn for around here for uh, a lot of the local companies will be uh, 18 to 20 dollars a square foot and we start out uh, about 25 dollars square hey, foot hey walter and, and uh, if the homeowner asks you how, how do you justify that other five dollars and like you said that's still five dollars less than some of these bigger guys yeah um i mean you're going to get what you pay for our warranty is better than anybody else so than not anybody else around yeah uh, but yeah i mean I've, it's very seldom that I'm asked that. Yeah. Well, yeah, because if, especially if you're booked out till July already. Yeah. And these jobs are taking a couple of weeks each. Now, what are you what uh, are you doing? What are you doing to try to get another crew going? Do you have one main guy already? Well, I don't. I'm not. I haven't done anything yet. See, I had a I had a second crew uh, that just did subcontracting for me. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't have to hire more employees. I hired a subcontractor. And they built buildings for us. Yeah, um, which is what I'd kind of like to do again. Yeah, um, I'm a uh, hey, JB. What do you, I haven't. JB, do you like the do you do you like the uh, like hiring someone or, or 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 would you prefer to do the uh, the subcontracting? Man, I love hiring subs. I do. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I mean, it it takes takes all your material expense and all your equipment expense you know you don't have that yeah when instead of because for me to put another crew together it's going to take at least five six grand yeah just to put another crew together and, and, and that's that's tools yeah you know that's not and i didn't I, and i didn't talk sub, yeah because i didn't even talk about that like go uh, ahead for that whole hiring and firing and all the other stuff is uh I, i'm with both of you guys is is i mean i would prefer to uh you know sub it out to guys that i can trust and even when i'm subbing it out yeah. you know I'm, I'm i'm showing them all of my thing this is how we do it boom 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 boom. if you do it different you know let me know you know but at the end of the day you're the one you know not going to be getting paid like i'm you know because i'm gonna have to go back in here and make it right you know for the homeowner uh and, you know, I, I used to do like the whole thing to where I give them my hats, my shirts and, and other stuff. So they showed up to kind of look, you know, like they they worked for me. Uh, and, and sometimes we still do. But some guys don't really want to do that. You know, and they someone would show up with their own, you know, vans and logos and stuff. Uh, and I wouldn't even mind sometimes is is because usually there were guys that I knew um, and, and, and I want them to succeed anyway. But like you said, if you're subbing it out and they really know what they're doing, there's a couple of things. One, you know your profit margin immediately. So, so you know you're you're getting fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand, bam. You know, done deal. All you had to do was was run the paperwork, talk to the homeowner. You know, almost almost easy money. Uh, and then, but their ass is on the line because if it ain't right, 
you know, they're not getting paid the same way we don't get paid when we're working for homeowners and it ain't right. Uh, you know, but we get to go back in and make it right. And uh, it, it, so it's like, it's, it's always been one of my favorite, you know, I like to have my, my, my steady two crews, but then I like to have two crews that, that, that I can sub out to these the guys that I know are trying to, uh, you know, you know, build a better life or they need a little bit more money because they do. I mean, like when you're subbing it out, at least for us, uh, we didn't have a big profit margin uh, like we did with, with our own employees, but it was worth giving it up for the, for the uh, lack of like headache or the babysitting or the everything else. It was like, man, these guys knows what they're doing. They're going to do a better job than my own guys would. And this is how much they're getting. This is how much I'm getting. Everybody's going to go home happy. Yep. <clears throat> I have one sub that, that works with me and, I trust him. I know his quality of work. It's just yeah. like ours. And that's, that's the only reason he's still with us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I, but on bigger projects, we we're starting to, I'm going to bring him in for like a week, two weeks and assign him stuff, let him get it knocked out. And our guys will just kind of, we'll have two crews going on a big project and just kind of work around each other. Yeah. You know, but and get it but, knocked out and put some money in your pocket. Yeah. And that's the thing too, though, is if, if, if you had two or three guys like that, that you were subbing to, you know, then all you got to do is turn up Google ads so that the phone rings more or whatever, and then just kind of weed through them. And, and just the busier you keep three guys, four guys, whether you're subbing them out to them or not, uh, you know, the more money you're going to be, you know, being able to bring in. Yep. <clears throat> hey, Walter, <clears throat> are you still subbing out to these other guys or, or, or what are you doing? No. Uh, right now, it's just um, three employees, just my crew. Because um, uh, no, they, got, they got, they're busy um, or they're doing something else? Yeah. They, they started, I mean, they started doing their own and uh, they started putting me on the back burner. So yeah. I had to, that didn't work. <laughs> no, no. And that's like, and that's a, and that's a whole part of the whole game too is, is, uh, yeah. and I had another contractor shit probably three months ago is, is, uh, he had two guys. And after talking to this dude, I almost wanted to refund his money. Cause I, I even, I ended up not liking him, <laughs> he said, but, but two of these, and he was like an architect dude. And, and then, uh, he had some, you know, great clients and he was drawing up all the blueprints and he, he wanted to keep all the money himself. And he was trying to hire these general contractors to do the work, but pay them like they were uh, employees and they were getting frustrated and, and quitting. But then the homeowner was like canceling and getting out of the contract and some other shit and, and would go and work with these other contractors because they were the ones doing the work. You know, the whole thing was a freaking mess. And I was like, dude, then if you're going to be doing that, you would have to draw up some contracts with guys and, uh, and put it in writing to where that's almost as if uh, you know, someone's working for Walmart and, and taking supplies home, that's embezzlement. You know, you can't be, you know, you can't hire a subcontractor and he come in and steal the job from you. It, you so that's almost part of the contract almost has to be that you, you know, like referral business and other stuff is, is your work and, uh, and, and anything add on, like whether it's, you know, it's like the same client, that's your work. They can't be, you know, kind of, I don't want to use the word backstabbing, but making side deals with the homeowner. Oh, I can do it cheaper when I come over here, boom, 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 next week type of deal to where, man, if that's in the contract or if that's when you're talking to these guys, you know, put it bold with yellow, embezzlement, uh, punishable by law. You know, I don't know. Have somebody write it up to where it, it, at least like it, it should be. I don't know if it is. I mean, but it, it, it should be. But that's, that's another thing we got to kind of look at. Uh, but all of that stuff, the more you start doing right now, this time next year and the year after that, you, you kind of really weed through it and, and, and get it to where it's working for itself. Because right now, uh, uh, <coughs> go ahead, Walt. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea or not. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me. That's something I've, you know, I had two different crews working as subcontractors at one time uh, last year. Um, and uh, and that I like that. Um, and I would. I've thought about uh, if I could find a good crew 
or have or one or two crews to do subcontracting um, and not even have any employees. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's like like you said, as long as they um, mm -hmm. as, as as long as they're not putting you on the back burner, and that's what uh, I mean. In all honesty, it's like uh, like like these guys who get into construction who don't know anything about construction. They they got a master's in business from some university, and they looked around where where can they make the the best profit in whatever they're doing. Uh, and, and I've got two or three guys that are like that in uh, hardwood flooring, and all they do is hire subcontractors, you know, uh, like I used to be, or, or they'd hire, you know, should they'd have like five or six guys like me with, you know, and, and just bring them in and, and, you know, one by one and talk to them and say, Hey, I've got a lot of clients. I'm doing this. They have the showroom, the, you know, this and that. And, and just, man, they kept you busy. You didn't get as much profit, uh, you know, as, as, as as if it was your own job, but man, these guys would keep you busy. And that's what most of these guys want is because you're that now you're really running the business part of it. And most contractors either don't know how or don't want to deal with it. And again, you're just saying, Hey man, here's the address. Here's the work order. Here's what's going to be done. Here's how much money you're, you're going to get paid for the job. And they're happy. They don't, you know, it's like they go, they do their work, they do whatever they're supposed to. You're kind of there overseeing the, the homeowner part of it and making sure that they do what they're supposed to do because that's all the, when the homeowner hires us, whether they find us on the internet, referral, whatever it is, is they, they talk to JB about refinishing the cabinets or painting the house or something. I mean, they care a little bit about if Is he going to be there, you know, spraying the paint or doing this, but what they really care is that is they trust JB that it's going to be done the way it should be done. They don't know anything about painting. They don't know the guys who paint. They don't know which paint, none of that stuff. They're trusting, JB. They're trusting Walter to do it. They're trusting me that it's going to get done. Uh, it, it, and so when you're bringing in whoever it is, it, it, that part is like maybe 10 to 20% of it in the, in, in the homeowner's mind. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's just building the relationship with the subcontractors. And again, you're having your systems, you're having everything written down the way, because, uh, you know, I don't know, like shit, you know, one, they can't be on their, you know, you know, drinking beer at lunchtime type of shit or whatever, you know, you got to have your, you still got to have your standards. You still got to have all that stuff. I mean, uh, man, there ain't, there's nothing worse than, I mean, I've, over the years, I've gotten phone calls from all kind of shit. I mean, you guys are in the kitchen cooking and, and I'm like, oh my God, what? <laughs> or, or we showed up and they're getting high and this, or so-and-so smells like he's about ready to fall over, passed out. And like, I mean, I'm, I've had it all over you know, through the years and it's just, it's just a part of doing business, I guess. But if you can, I like the whole subcontractor thing. It's it, it, but it's just, you don't want to get to where you're too dependent on someone to where they can hold you over the fire to where you're in like, uh, cause the best thing about probably all of us is, is, uh, it, 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 and what separates us from the regular business guy that gets into construction is we're the construction guy that got into business is if shit, all my guys could call in sick and I could still show up and, and get almost not everything, but I can get a shit. I can get a lot done, you know, cause, cause I, you know, I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So they, I can, they could never leave me just holding the bag to where I have to tell the homeowner, we got to walk away to where some of these guys don't, 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 they don't have a clue about putting in cabinets or any part of construction to where if the guy don't show up, you know, they're just, they're stuck, you know, twiddling their thumbs, looking for someone to show up and do the work. Right. So it's, um, it's, it's definitely meeting with guys, building that relationship with them, telling them what you're doing. Uh, Cause you've, you guys already have the website. You're already, you already got the reputation. You already got the jobs coming in. This is what you want to do. This is how much you could pay them. That way, they don't have to worry about going out doing all that crazy marketing and websites and all the other stuff. You can you can supply them with enough work that they're you know they're gonna be able to make a good living. Right. And the biggest problem I have right now, as far as clients, is uh, uh, being out that far. Uh, they don't. People don't want to wait. You know, people people call. They want their stuff done a month. From <laughs> you know, yeah, because like, a, but, hey, but JB don't. World. Yeah, hey JB, don't you find that too though? How long do you book out, JB? <laughs> um, I'm out about three months right now. Are you? Yeah, but, and, that, and that's I mean, a I've lot. Had, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had people. I had a contractor call me the other day to do his own personal house, and 
he told me that since I was booked out two and a half, three months, that that wasn't going to work. He was going to find somebody else. Yeah. That's so a, I told him, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. I mean, it, I mean, I almost Just, can't blame him. It's like, shit, my wife, I told my wife, yeah, we're going to be waiting three months, four months. It should be going in. We need to get, you got to get this shit done right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's I, like. I get it. But. Yeah. But, and that's, and, and that kind of goes back to is, is uh, if you find yourself starting to, to book out that far in advance. So like right now, or, or as you're whining, it is a really good time to freaking, you know, raise the prices as much as you can. And people say, well, how much should I raise them? I'm like, man, as much as you can until they start saying no. Uh, but if you're saying, if they're saying yes to everything, you just want, is, I don't know, I had a buddy that sell, sold his boat once and he's like 24,000. And I thought, man, that's a lot of money. But the guy showed, he, when the guy asked him, hey man, how much for the boat? Wasn't really even for sale. He goes, yeah, 24 grand. He goes, all right. And came back with a freaking check. And my buddy was like, damn, maybe I should have said 30, you know, cause you can always come down. That's what it is. So when we raise the prices and when I say we type it in to when you have that typed out and printed out price list, when it's on there, it, it, it just <laughs> makes it real, makes it real for us. Definitely makes it real for the homeowner, especially if you have it on the, on your website. But, uh, it's a lot easier to come down on the price if you have to, but I don't know of anyone who ever heard, yeah, it's this much and the homeowner said, okay. And then we are able to go, wait a minute. <laughs> and then start trying to raise it is uh that, that looks a little shady. Oh yeah. But, uh, Hey, so the, what are, JB, I think me and you talked about this a while back, but I, uh, I want to kind of bring it up because I'm, I'm, I'm talking to another guy about it right now, actually two guys. It's uh, and I posted it in one in, in the for contractors group, but you know I had posted on there. You know, do you pay yourself as much as another company would mm. pay you, or do you pay yourself more? And I got all kind of freaking crazy answers. And uh, I think tomorrow I'm gonna go in there and do a, a Facebook live and, and kind of. I was trying to plant the seed. Is is I really wish we would as contractors, and I and this was the biggest thing for me the biggest hurdle for me to overcome uh, was, I don't know, in my head, the way I was raised, I never had anything, whatever it was, is uh, all the money that came in was like my money. And man, we were spending it as fast as it came in. And to where the company never had any money, I was always like, spend it and then I broke. And then I'm wondering what the hell is going on, man? I just did this job and like, we did three jobs. There should be plenty of money, but it's just, it's like, like a river flowing and, and, and the wife was right there helping the kids are helping everybody's, you know, and they loving it when daddy's got a good job because <laughs> everybody's spending money to where is the hardest thing was to, for me to understand that is uh, I've worked for a company. Yeah. I, I own the company, but I work for that company and I have to pay myself less than what I would pay someone with my skill level. Like if someone came in that had my same skill level, I'd have to pay him like nowadays it's almost like 35, 40 bucks an hour, but I'd have to pay my, I'd have to learn to live on 25 an hour or whatever the, the, the going rate is, pay yourself a little bit less. And it's like, just learn to suffer uh, and, and learn to get by so that the company is always stashing money away. You, you, you end up with five grand, 10 grand, 50 grand. Now you got 200 grand in the bank and the company's there. You, you got a second location. You want to open up somewhere. You got money to play with. Cause I see these guys on these, a couple of these groups and they're always asking about, Hey, but how do you get one of these SBA loans, small business loans? And I'm like, dude, don't, don't, don't. I was like, mm -hmm. I, and when it comes to that part, man, I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. It's like, please don't go into debt to try to build your business. If the money's not coming in, let's work on that. You know, lower your ex. I need this new equipment. I need this. I need that. And I was like, man, I was like, I know you think you do, but it's like ah, rent it for right now and get the jobs coming in, you know, something, but uh, slowly yeah. back that money up to where you become, you, you, you can borrow from yourself and you got a good a tax accountant. You're able to do that stuff. The company freaking can buy the equipment. You can lease it back to yourself. What, or you personally can buy it and you can lease it to the company. There's a whole bunch of that stuff, but you've got to get in the habit of paying yourself less than what another company would pay you. Learn to live on that and just start really getting cash strong, cash heavy uh, in, in, in the business. Uh, you know, just everything. Cause yeah, maybe. And then, cause, cause then you really start doing all the crazy shit. Like, 
these good accountants know what to do is I was never a fan of, of leasing vehicles. I'm like, I ain't leasing no vehicle. That's just throwing money away. And this and it's like, but yeah, but when it comes to taxes, it's not, you get, you know, you're able to write it all off. It's a company vehicle. It's this, it's, you know, all of that. That's where the accountant is going to help you. But none of that is possible if you do like I used to do and you, you make a hundred dollars, you spend 101, you make, Ten thousand dollars, you spend eleven thousand. It's like, and it was just hand over. It's like, man, what the hell's going on? And I did that for like at least five years, at least five years, and then slowly took another three to four years to understand what was going on and paying myself. And I'm like, well, I'm worth more than that, and, and, and this or that, and or then you pay yourself and you start to do it for a little while. And I'm learning to live off of. Uh, of, of, of my pay, my income, as if I had a job working somewhere, because you do, you work for a company, even though you own the company, but then I'd start getting some money kind of backed up, stacked up, and, and, uh, and the company would start getting a little cash on hand, you, uh, and that, man, that, one, that, that's just a great feeling, because if, shit, when the engine blows up in the truck, man, you, you're able to fix it, or go get a new one, or if one of the tools breaks down, you've got cash on hand, you can go get it, and, and, Jesus, that's so, man, you can sleep so much better at night, but, but I'd get to where I'm saving up 20, 30 grand. And again, I, you know, personally, I would take it out of the company to go buy something that I thought I needed. And I would tell myself why I needed it and all this other shit. And, uh, and that took me another two or three years to, to break that freaking habit. So I'm telling you is if you can pay yourself less for three to five years and get your company to be cash heavy is man, you're going to sleep better at night. When the opportunities do come around, you're going to be able to take advantage of them uh, to where even materials, and maybe you'll have a warehouse or something, but maybe you can get materials 80 cent on the dot, you know, type of deal, 80% off because you can buy in bulk like some of these guys do and, and stack it up. And, and so instead of in, investing in Bitcoin, JB, <laughs> you, you're investing in material. Hey, man. You, <laughs> if, if it works, it works. I, I, I'm, not just, I'm just, I'm talking crap. Yeah. I'm talking Don't crap. You know, I know <laughs> it. But I had this freaking company that, man, they used to buy these freaking, uh, they buy the whole freaking trailer of wood. And I'm like, good God, man, they're buying all this freaking wood. And, you know, I had another buddy say, yeah, man, because they can, they can afford it. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, yeah, they're selling it to us for like 460 a square foot. And they're getting it for like 80 cent a square foot because they're buying so much of it. And I'm like, gosh. And then they use it throughout the whole year because they know they're going to. They know their material. They know what's going on. So that, you know, so they're investing in their own company and getting and buying material from themselves. I mean, so all of that stuff is the way you really start to, you know, grow your business exponentially. And, uh, and you can't do it if you're always freaking behind the eight ball, always waiting for that next check, that next payment to come in. So you, you can pay the bills off here, pay there. Uh, I mean, because at one time, I couldn't save money because I was always paying freaking late fees on everything. It's like everything was freaking paid late, making up arrangements, making call, you know, making arrangements, making arrangements to where you're paying all these freaking late fees. Uh, that's why I almost wish that they would outlaw these freaking check in the cash places and these auto loan places that like, you know, mm -hmm. the lower income people just don't have a freaking clue and they never get out of freaking debt. They're freaking, you know, either losing their car or almost losing their car. They get their check on Friday. They're, break, you know, broke Monday, borrowing more money from these people. And it's just a circle that they never get out of. Uh, and I was there with my own freaking business doing the same thing. But I was the check in the cash dude, <laughs> wondering why I could never get ahead. So uh, I, I don't know. Just I, I can't stress that freaking enough. But uh, so that's about it. Any, yeah. anything, anything before we get out of here, we, we guys, you, you want to touch on something, talk about something? I actually pay myself uh, with a W-2. Good, good. From the company. Hey, Walter, do you have a full-on accountant or do you, does your wife do it? Um, we use QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we have the live bookkeeping through QuickBooks. Ooh, and ooh. They, they take care of all the taxes and everything. You know, like Angie Dobb, like uh, she does a lot of contractors that I know <clears throat> and she has the QuickBooks and I mean, she saves them money just by joining, you, you, being able to use her or whatever the heck it is. But uh, I mean, it, it, it helps. Uh, 
then this is being recorded. But and then and then we got the cash jobs. You know, sometimes that we're able to put stuff away and and and, and keep off the books if you can. Uh, AJB, who's who's doing all your stuff? You, are you doing it? You and the wife? Um, actually, my mother-in-law in Missouri. She's the one that's been doing it. She's been a CPA for forty years, and she's teaching me and the wife how to do it. So yeah, but I do want to find somebody that that can teach me all the write-offs. Uh, yeah, like you were talking about leasing vehicles. Yeah, you know, I, I want to know all that. So. Yeah, and that's key. Is uh, like I said, that lady. <clears throat> You know, uh, if you watch that other video where I was saying is like uh, one of the first people you hire, I believe, is, is your office manager. But in, but uh, a lady that we hired years ago was like old, retired, tough as nails lady that had been in construction and she kind of knew all that stuff. But man, and these, whether I don't know what you want to call them, loop loopholes. I mean, but they're legitimate freaking write offs. Oh yeah, and and you need an accountant that knows every freaking one of them, and it's worth paying him eleven hundred dollars versus paying someone three hundred dollars to do your paper, you know, to do your 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 account because he's going to save you that much. You know, they talk stuff about you know they talk crap about Trump, you know, not doing taxes this and that or whatever. It's you know, and uh, and he said, hey, I just I use the laws that you guys put on the books, and as a as a being a a, right. a corporate guy. It's, it's almost illegal for him not to make as much money for the corporation as they possibly can because it, all the money goes back to the shareholders. So they could be sued in, in that regards. But when it comes to construction, it's like in just small businesses, every little write-off, whether it's, uh, you know, and they always change it, you know, whether, you know, like how much you can write off for food and, uh, you know, uh, other things. Uh, and, and like even, even my RV and stuff, if we take it to a couple of job sites and, say we're staying there for security or you know it's too far to drive home so we're saving money by not staying in a hotel i mean there's all kind of stuff that's legitimate and, and how much if you're doing a home office or garage and you're storing even a little bit of stuff in your garage that square footage gets to be written off i mean all of that stuff we need to know because we need to be able to take advantage of all of it we work way too freaking hard to give it to uncle sam to give to somebody else That's right. I have been writing off my uh, my garage. It's, I don't know, 300, 400 square foot. And yeah. I mean, I've, but. And there is, I mean, it's like, yeah, and, we're just, and, uh, it's like, I don't know, looking around, finding the right, like you say, accountant, the right CPA, someone who's in construction and just, you know, paying the extra money just for all the freaking, uh, legal write-offs that you can that you can save uh, like, like like i said that whole you know buying the equipment or renting equipment and there's all kind of stuff that they tell you is like uh you buy a new piece of equipment i don't know maybe it's 30 grand or something you know you can write so much off the first year or you know and, but then you can lease it or you can own it you can lease it from this company all kind of all those all those little things that you you really need to learn uh because sometimes it's like after it's depreciated enough like you may want to sell it to somebody and uh, and, and buy another new one or, or, or something, or, you know, it, it's just, you got to learn that stuff or, or have someone who knows it. Uh, Cause that's the biggest thing. Like when you talk to, you go to any of these seminars, you talk to any of these guys who are multi multi millionaires and that's their biggest thing is like the easiest thing to do in the world is make millions of dollars. The hardest thing is keeping it. And they mean by like the taxes and the this and the that and how much you put away in savings that you can do and, and get away with. It's it's just it's it's crazy. And, and I don't think it's ever going to change. You know, I've always said forever, it's like, man, just you know, get rid of all that crap, just do 15% tax, whatever across the board. And and it's just that would put so many lawyers in right. account. Yeah, that would put so many lawyers and accountants and everybody else out of work. It, you know, it's just yeah, I don't know, man. That 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 tax code crap that's like 30,000 pages or whatever the hell it is, you, you, you couldn't read it. You need someone who freaking knows. So, all right. So uh, anything else before we get out of here? Hey, what you guys do for yesterday, man? JB? For, for Valentine's. <laughs> both, of you, both of you guys are married. Um, 
I packed my mother-in-law up in a U-Haul. Oh, did you? <laughs> and, 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 and did what? Mo and, and moved her somewhere? Kicked her out? What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, she's moving back to North Alabama, so, mm. um, yeah. What about you, Walter? Did you but do something my special? Wife said it was the best. The best, the best yeah, Valentine's gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and Walter, you got you got that baby, man. Did you just uh, give the wife a break from the baby. Uh, every, as much as I can, yeah, and yeah. So yesterday, uh, I did that and took care of all three meals and everything. So yeah, I was yeah. like, it, it is good. <laughs> Cause we 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 know like like and she's I mean she stays at home with the kids and she's uh, also in school and yeah. she's writing a book so yeah good for her. What, what hey what the book what, what's the book that she's writing it's a memoir of her life or stories yeah, yeah good for her yep. yeah uh, hey JB because your your wife was a uh, stay at home mom too right JB yeah she went back to work now she just she can't do it anymore. You got like what four or five kids though, right? Yeah. And they're older a little, a little bit, right? Yeah, so. I've got two that are two that are in high school and two that are younger. So yeah, but yeah, they're um, they're, they're not in diapers. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm done with that phase. <laughs> I don't know, it was like you know because I cooked I, I cooked white uh, I cooked dinner for the wife, but I what I always do is like is uh. I mean, we we normally don't celebrate any of these little holidays. Uh, we did a little bit yesterday, but uh, you know, it, it 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 that that would that one was almost as tough as learning how to spend money properly was uh, <laughs> it was learning how to treat the wife properly. So uh, people ask me, ask you know, because we've been together shit on thirty five years now. Uh, and people say, "Man, how you been together so long?" And I say, "I said doesn't have anything to do with me. You, you have to find someone." Uh, that'll put up with you for for 20 years and then spend the next friggin 50 years making it up to them that's right so, so, so i try so i try to treat it so i try to treat every day like is like a valentine's day uh man those dudes selling flowers on the on the freeway shit i i, I get those guys at least once or twice a week so that the house is always fresh flowers or something but uh it's amazing that she put up with me as long as she did and uh, she had, you know, just with the business, with the, you know, the kids, she was always a stay at home mom and uh, she helped him with the business. And then we found that accountant, but we worked together as much as we could. But at the same time, he's like, man, sometimes we would knock heads or uh, it just, it, it, it was tough trying to, to, I don't know if I could be in business with, with my wife full time, all the time. Yeah. That, that, that would almost be too much, but yeah, man, they, that, they that if, tough. It is, but man, it's like what they do with the kids all the time is shoot. There's no way I could do it. Like if she went no, to work, no, if she said I'm gonna go to work and you stay home and do all of this, not a chance. I mean, she drove, <laughs> she drive them all over the damn place, always doing this appointments and that. And I was like, my God, it's like oof. So I'd, I'd have to start a second company. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey, look, honestly, man, it's like it, it, it was almost. It's almost a vacation being able to go to work for six, <laughs> seven, eight hours a day. Because when I'm on a job site, I'm just talking shit with the guys. I, I, I notice stuff good enough that you're, you're not thinking about it anymore. You're just having fun doing it type of deal. Uh, and, and then you got to go home and deal with that. It's like, man, I'd, I'd rather be at work. That's right. Yeah. So, all right, man, we're going to get out of here. We'll be here next. So uh, it'll be Sunday for sure. It ain't no holidays or anything coming up. Uh, I know Kit said he don't even have electricity right now, JB. Yeah, I know. I was trying to talk to him yesterday before we went out. Yeah, he, he said he had to drive like, shoot, 45 minutes just to get phone reception or something. He's like, and I don't even know if his wife is back home. Man. Yeah, well, it's crazy. So, hey, hey, Walter, what's weather at where you're at right now? Indiana. Blowing snow, zero degrees right now. Woo. Hey, man, and, and you're working in that? No, nope, not today. Not <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I know Doug up in New Jersey, man, he got backed up like there was like three or four days that, that he couldn't work to where they couldn't even get out of the house. It was so much snow coming down and wouldn't stop. And then when it did yeah. stop, there was too much snow to go out and do any kind of work. 
Yeah, I told the guys we'll try Wednesday, but depending on how much snow we get, we won't even be able to do them. So yeah. We'll see. Damn. All right. Hey, sh- sh- uh, any questions or anything? Jump on, jump on the group and and we'll talk about it. And then I'll see you guys Sunday. All, All right. right. All right. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys.